Uh, Jin Shang Shang has been working on Lustre since 2006. Yeah. Jin Shang spent most of his time on client I.O. feature development and bug fixing. Uh, he specialized on Lustre I.O. code, performance, tuning, and LDM, sorry, LDL, isn't that like cholesterol? LDL M-Lock. Jin Shang Shang is now a staff engineer at Intel. And with any luck, this is going to work. Thank you. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, layout lock. So this is today's agenda for my presentation. So first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, what is the data layout of Lustre. And then I'm going to cover uh, some requirements about layout lock. Then I'm going to dive into some implementation detail about layout lock and finally, uh, I'm going to list some use cases of layout lock. Okay, so what is the data layout in Lustre? So data layout determines how to place your data into OSTs. This is because in Lustre, we usually uh, put your data on multiple OST uh, to fully use the network and the disk drive bandwidth. So it's pretty important for you to know the data location so that you can find it back later. Right now, uh, the layout is stored as an extended attribute on the MDT object and interpreted by the LLV layer, so let's take a look at the picture. So the, uh, the blue line is the metadata path, and uh, the red line is I.O. path. So first, the layout has to be fetched uh, from the MDT side to the LLV, and uh, in this case, if application issues an I.O., it will go through the light object and then go to LLV object. At LLV object, it be, the I.O. will be split, uh, split by the layout to multiple OSC object and then finally go to OST object. In Nostr, the only layout which is supported is red zero and uh, which is immutable after it is, is set up. Okay, so why do we need layout lock? Because we do have the requirements to change the layout. Usually we tend to cache the, the layout on the client side because Otherwise, we have to fetch layout from MDT for every single I.O., so this is not acceptable. Okay, so there are a couple of features, new features, which we need to change the layout on the fly. So the first one is HSM, which is the major, uh, major motivation of layout lock, and then replication, and then data on MDS, and then Restriping, also known as migration. So, I'd like to mention replication, especially because this is a very important feature to let us deploy Lustre on commodity hardware, and uh, that means we can use Lustre in cloud computing. Yeah, you know that's pretty hard right now. So, uh, lay out the lock. Lay out the lock. It's a fundamental feature for all of the data placement features if they want to change layout. Okay, so uh, in the next few slides, I'm going to cover some implementation detail about layout lock. So layout lock is an IP lock which is managed by MDT. And uh, on the client side, Layout lock is required to cache layout on the client. That means if the layout lock 
uh, is revoked by the MDT, the layout will, be, will become invalidated. Actually, we, we don't want to uh, reconfigure the IO stack for each losing of layout lock. This is because we have to clean up everything, for example, caching pages and uh, caching logs uh, to, uh, to reconfigure IO stack. And uh, this will be time consuming and uh, sometimes unnecessary. So instead, when we lose the layout lock, we just mark the layout as invalid. So right now, I.O. will depend on a layout lock. That means before each I.O. starts, we have to check if the caching layout is correct on the client side. If not, we are going to talk to the MDT and uh, to fetch the up-to-date layout. Also, a compatibility uh, connecting flag is worked out to address the compatibility issue. Layout lock will be supported in last uh, 2004, which will be released soon. Okay, so layout lock requesting. Usually, the uh, layout lock is picked back by I take it after uh, or open request. In this way, we are not going to add extra overhead for uh, for this extra lock. And uh, this is pretty important for a study ahead when we have done a lot of work to improve study ahead perform performance by Fan Yong, so I don't want to ruin it, right? Of course, uh, we only pick back the layout lock if there's no confliction on the server side. This is because potentially the layout lock can be held by some process for some special purpose for a long time and we can't live with waiting for it for a long time. So on the MDT side, MDT object lock try is invented for this purpose. So we just try to get the layout lock. If we can't, we just you know, abort it. And uh, so usually for the get after RPC, we, are, uh, we can return three, uh, three IPs lock right now. So it's a lookup, update, and the layout. If we can't grant the layout lock for the get after and the open, layout lock can be requested by IT layout explicitly. This is a normal DLM requesting uh, request handling on the MDT. That means it can wait much longer than intent, uh, intent, uh, intent request. Layout can be uh, returned with DLM reply if there's no contention on the MDT or LOV, bu uh, LOVB buffer in the completion AST if there's contention on the MDT. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some tricky case about the layout lock. So first of all, layout lock, it's an IP lock, but it's mainly used in IO path. So that means we cannot hold the layout lock to do I.O. to avoid being evicted by the MDT. So to explain this problem, so suppose we hold the layout lock and do I.O. and uh, even some of the OST is unreachable during I.O. <laughs> and meanwhile, the layout lock will be canceled, uh, will be revoked by the MDT. So what will happen? Okay, so the client will be evicted because it can't cancel the layout lock on time. So this is not acceptable. The consequence about this is that layout lock can be lost anytime during I.O. But on the other hand, we have to make sure the layout is correct for the I.O. So they are 
contradictory by themselves. So this is very tricky and uh, we usually need some extra mechanism to make sure the data model is correct. So I put a stop here. If you are going to use layout lock in your project, so you have to think, it, think about it carefully to make sure you are doing the right thing. So, but of course I don't mind if you, if you like to talk to me first. Okay, so let's take a look the IO handling with the layout lock. So first of all, so I will init, and then before actual IO starts, we have to make sure the layout is correct. By doing this, we first of all we check if there is a correct uh, layout lock on the client. If not. We have to talk to the MDT to uh, request layout lock and of course up to date layout. And then actual I.O. will be performed uh, to send a data to OSTs. And after this, layout has, has to be verified and we are going to check the cache of layout lock again and if not, we'll have to talk to the MDT again. And if during this time the layout is changed, so we have to restart the whole I.O. and otherwise the I.O. is finished. Okay, so I'm going to cover some use cases of layout lock. So this is pretty important and uh, we're going to add a lot, a lot of data placement features into uh, 2.5 and 2.6, right? So, first of all, is layout swap. This, in, this is an MDT operations to swap the layout between two files. So usually we we use this to change the layout of a file right now. So please take a look take a look at the pictures. The picture on the right is, uh, is two files before changing layout. So the file, uh, this is right, right? Uh, this is left, sorry, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> sorry, uh, okay, on the left, is, uh, you have two files and uh, the file with blue block is the actual file which contains your real data. And the file with red block uh, is temporary file. So usually this kind of file is created with the de uh, desired layout so that you can, you can, you can, you can change the layout, layout of your original file. So the picture on the right uh, is the file stat after layout change. So as you can see, the blue file will have empty layout, but, go. Oh yeah, yes, yes, yeah, I'll do that later, thank you. And the red file will take over the layout and the OST objects. So this actually happened in HSM release and the, the temporary file will be deleted soon so that your temporary file along with OST objects will be deleted on the MDT side. And during this time, layout change time, uh, MDT has to uh, revoke layout so that clients will be uh, notified by this change. And the core cool thing is that usually even opening, uh, opening file handles will not, be vex uh, will not be affected so that if you have opened a file uh, during layout swap, your file is still accessible. So this is very cool. Okay, so another use case is restriping, also known as migrations. For migration, uh, the main purpose is to change the stripe number of a file. For example, 
if you add some more OSTs into a cluster and uh, you want to do a space balance, so you want to move some files into another OST pool. And we, we need to use layout log for this feature. So first, you do create a temporary file with the desired strap count and the desired OSTs. And then we're going to copy file content to the temporary file and then we're going to swap the layout and the delete temporary files so that the old objects will be deleted from the OSTs as well. So from now on, OIO to original file will be forwarded uh, to the new objects. Even the file is opened before the striping. So this is really cool. Another use case is uh, data on MDS. So for data on MDS, we usually store small, uh, small data on the MDT so that we can benefit from a, a fast a data access, also less RPC. And if the file becomes larger, we definitely want to migrate it to the OSTs. So if this happens, we're going to allocate OST objects to uh, generate a layout and then we're going to migrate uh, this small data from, it, uh, from MDT to OSTs. And then we're going to revoke layout so that all of the clients will be notified for the update of layout. So the next one is replication. For replication, we're going to store the same data on multiple OSTs. So the, the major challenge of replication is that if one replica failed uh, to write, we have to take the replica out of the layout because we don't want that replica to, to be read by some of the clients because it will include stale data. So this is what we are going to do for a replication. So client will be notified of this new layout because we are going to take one, uh, this stale replica out of the layout. And then new replica will be created by the uh, dedicated clients. And then layout will be updated again so that we have uh, four replicas for the object. And the last one is HSM. Uh, CEA guys will cover this topic uh, for HSM. And uh, layout lock is mainly motivated by HSM guys, so thank you very much. And the layout lock is needed to restore and uh, release files for HSM. Yeah, this is my presentation. Thank you very much. We're running behind, but is there a question? Hello. I wanted to ask you, one of the key features that a lot of people have requested is that not only can you change the stripe yes. count in the migration, but that you can actually control which OSTs all the striping goes to. Yeah, of course. So usually, for example, if you have a couple of uh, SATA disks in your old cluster, right, and uh, you got some new money, and uh, you want to get SSD OSTs, and add them to your cluster. And then you want to migrate some data, for example, your bank, uh, your bank account information to the SSD so that you can access it faster, right? And in that case, you can create a pool with your SSD OSTs, and then you can create a, a temporary file in the SSD pool, and then migrate the file.
So if, uh, if the layout is revoked while a client is actively writing to um, an OST that will no longer be in the layout, so what happens in that case? Well, so yeah, this is a very good question. Oh, oops. Okay, so yeah, basically look at the stop. So basically you need an extra mechanism to make sure your data model is consistent. Yeah, for example, right now for a for migration, we are using a group lock to make a, and a data version to make sure the, the the file is completed, copied to the new file, and uh, there's no any active I/O and uh, dirty cache on the other client. For HSM, we are going to use exclusive open to make sure there's nobody else uh, is, uh, is opening this file, yeah. Okay, so, the, so there's no mechanism to, act to, to force the client to stop writing to the old object? Yes, you, have, you, yes, you need a, an extra mechanism, okay. yeah. So be careful if you are going to use the other lock in your project. Yeah. Okay, we'll press for time. Yeah, uh, just one, well, one more quick one. Help yourself and... Uh, Help yourself. Sorry, Sorry, I got hit me later. Thank you. Guys. I got hit at the mic. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. Is it done? Or? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>